We're coming to you from the floor of the New York Auto Show next on Talking Cars. Hi there and welcome to Talking Cars with Consumer Reports. I'm Tom Mutchler. I'm Jake Fisher. I'm Gabe Shenhar. You know, there's been years at the New York show that it's been pretty light, but this was, there was a lot of stuff here this year. Good Let, show. Let's yeah. start with the big surprise, the 10th generation Honda Civic. Yeah, I think they realized that uh, the current generation uh, was a bit botched up and they tried uh, damage control after uh, a year and a half and then uh, they decided to give it a, a short cycle and go for a real true redesign. I mean, yeah, which, which redesign do you want to reference? The 2012 one that was a mess, the 13 update that made it kind of better, the 14 update that gave it a CVT, and now 16. New car. Well, and actually, which new car do we want to talk about, too? Because this 2016, they showed a coupe. We yes. haven't seen the sedan. Five-door hatchback. The five-door hatchback is probably the most interesting one because they're the... splitting, and that's going to be the mm -hmm. European five-door, which I'm kind of excited about because the last several years, there have been, there's been another Civic. Yes. Not the kind of the cruddy one that we get, but the one in Europe, which mm -hmm. actually has been critically acclaimed. So it would be really interesting to see how that one kind of fits in there. And, and I'm we'll looking forward to driving it. And we'll it. see if that five-door winds up being a Type R. Which they're saying, yeah. I mean, they sort of said, yeah. So I'm kind of excited about that. So, I mean, they're hinting at a lot of stuff here. A new family of engines, including a turbo, small displacement, 1.5 liter turbo. Ooh, four. Ooh, ooh. Turbo VTEC. Turbo VTEC. Good stuff. This is going to be really interesting. 1.5 liter turbo VTEC. New platform. It's supposed to be lightweight. Yes. They're claiming luxury level refinement, which. Everyone has claimed that actually. That's, that's I think true. that's right yeah. in the like four yeah, wheels, that's right. tires. It's you pull up template of a press <laughs> right. conference template. It's it's luxury yes. level refi. Uh, but there's not a lot on details. This this is a total tease right now. Yeah, you know, for a car that's coming out in fall. the fall, it is a total tease. Well, let's see if they learned their lesson. I I kind of bet they did. Yeah, uh, a company that showed us a whole lot more sheet metal is Cadillac and the rival between the two domestic Luxo barges. First, let's start with the Cadillac CT6. Yeah, it's really nice to have a Cadillac flagship, uh, a true flagship. The XTS uh, was yeah. not a flagship. No, it wasn't. And, and the CT6, uh, I mean, they're kind of positioning it between a BMW 5 Series and a 7 Series, and so it's not a true, true flagship, and I think uh, there may be a CT8 at some point. But uh, anyway, it's, uh, it's building up on the CTS. It, um, it's supposed to be uh, light, the interior is gorgeous, there's a lot of new interesting tech there and, and lightweight design and it looks promising. Yeah. I mean, this isn't just a flagship for Cadillac, this is a flagship for General Motors. So this is the best we can do in terms of the sedan and it does look really good. And, and one number that they did talk about, 3,700 pounds. So this is a vehicle that is the size of an S-Class, the size of a 7 Series BMW. 3,700 pounds is like kind of where mid-size sedans were just a few years ago. Right. And they're doing this with a lot of pretty innovative ways of building the car. So yeah, it's aluminum exterior, and mm -hmm. we've seen that from everything from like Jaguar to an F-150. Yes. But they're also using a lot of steel in certain places and different types of steel, and they're bonding them in all types of special ways. Anyway, 3,700 pounds is pretty impressive for a vehicle that way, and they're gonna make it lighter, they can make it faster, they can do it with downsized engines, there's no V8 in it, 400 horsepower from the V6, uh, twin turbo V6, three liters. Um, there's room for a V8 though. <laughs> yeah, who knows? I mean, they don't need it. Um, well, maybe for marketing CT6 purposes. CT6 V. CT8? I, I don't know. Yeah. Um, but, you know, the lightweight should also help it drive well, which has been a hallmark of Cadillac in recent mm -hmm. years. I'm not so sure Lincoln is so worried about the Continental driving well. Uh, while the CT6 is pretty much ready to go, Continental will probably see next year. Well, Continental is, uh, let's just make sure we know it's a concept. Right. And uh, they're they not sure that, that they, they're gonna... I thought they said 16, this thing, this thing comes out. Okay, so uh, it, actually I, I wouldn't say it, it not worried about driving. It should drive pretty well if it's based on the Fusion platform, which we know can do really good things. I mean, the new Edge is really impressive and that platform is really versatile and can support a large car as the Continental. Okay, but that raises the question, when you're putting out a flagship, does it need to be a rear drive platform like the CT6? Well, um, I mean, for some credibility out there, maybe yes, but if it comes as all-wheel drive, then 
it kind of masks those kind of differences, so you don't get the adverse effects of a powerful front-wheel drive car. So that, that can take care of that uh, concern. Two, two completely different directions. And it's really interesting, like everybody, all the buzz on the interwebs, everyone's like, oh, Continental versus CT6. And, and, and as Gabe says, one's a concept, one's a real car, one's a big, floaty, comfy thing, I and mean, we all about luxury, one's a sporty vehicle. Um, there's really kind of a divergence. Another thing about Cadillac is it's totally the family resemblance, right? I mean, it looks like kind of a, mm -hmm. it looks like a little bit bigger Oh, yeah. CT, you know, a CTS, but it looks like it's crying with the headlights. I mean, that's the only difference. That's how you can tell. And um, but then you look at Lincoln; it looks like nothing that no, Lincoln has put out in years. Exactly. Yeah, but I don't think that that divergence like is is uh, is so uh, such a divergence uh, these days. Uh, I mean, being a, a dynamic, agile car as well as comfortable riding car, it, it, these things are not mutually exclusive anymore. Sure. I mean, if you look at the Mercedes S Class, I mean, it, it's the most comfortable riding car in the world, probably, and yeah. It, it's more fun to drive than uh, all of its competitors. You're, you're absolutely right. Uh, the, the car should be able to do both, and there's so many examples, like you said, that, that do that. But it's very interesting how they're kind of marketing. When you're talking about, you know, at Lincoln, they're talking about oh, it's plush and luxurious and oh, quiet. Oh, the interior. And you know what? When we were talking in the Cadillac, or like it's sporty, it's fun, yeah. it's nimble. So they're kind of. Mm -hmm. And there's, there's, room to go, there's room to go down the two different roads. The interior in the Continental is. Well, that's uh, like velour. Blue <laughs> fuzziness. So uh, I was uh, caught saying the other day at the office, uh, you know, with the with the Cadillac and Lincoln flagship, where is the Chrysler New Yorker? The Chrysler New Yorker <laughs> is just kind of like natural. <laughs> yeah. They'll probably base it on some Fiat platform. Ah, it's mm. easy. 300C, throw in the Hellcat motor, and you're you're halfway there. They already have a stretched version of it. There so, you go. So why not? Uh, another big introduction here at the show is the Lexus RX. Yeah, very important car, one of the most uh, popular cars among our readers. Right. And it really looks good, looks like a, a real upgrade in terms of interior, in terms of tech. Uh, the, um, Go on. You know, the visibility is, uh, is we'll probably... We'll knock you down in a moment. <laughs> <laughs> uh, sure, I mean, it wouldn't be a podcast uh, without that. So, uh, <laughs> no, uh, I think the visibility takes a... Uh, uh, it a, takes a back seat, a back seat takes a back completely. window. Yeah. I, I, think I mean, there is no back window there. Yeah. I mean, it's uh, there basically was a disappeared. huge increase in the sides of the grill. You know, they definitely uh, improved the grill size. 80% more spindle. Um, and um, I don't know. It, it, you know, it, it's, it's, it's going to be tough, and it's going to be interesting driving that vehicle. Because here's the thing. It's like... They got like 25% of the market of mid-sized luxury yeah. vehicles. I mean, they customers own love it. that. They have over 2 million of these things. Nobody is close. I mean, it is a crowded market. Nobody is so, even close. So then and how, how do, do they screw with it? Right. Why do you and screw with it? And how did they do it? You know why? Know how they did it? Because they are really a luxurious vehicle. Mm -hmm. Everyone else is trying to be sporty. Everyone else has got firm rides and right. trying to be sporty. But RX has never tr gone that path. The Although, RX, with every generation, uh, 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 they say that they're going to be more it, agile. But they, they say it, but they're but smart. The they're thing, not going the, but, but you you say it. But you say it to con us here at the car show, <laughs> and then you go and you just put the Novocaine steering in it and you make it soft and yes. all your customers bring throw money at you. Because here is the guilty little secret. <laughs> That right. I mean, are you marketing to car journalists? No, they are you can't, marketing we, they to can't people afford who buy cars? Yes. No, no, no. So, so you go, and this car has always been isolated, quiet, comfortable. Mm -hmm. No, it doesn't have razor sharp. But that has been the magic. That's why it gets twenty five percent of the market share. And I just I'm a little bit of afraid when they keep on talking about sporty that all they're gonna do is make that thing a little bit stiffer and. You know, give it like heavier the, steering, and people are going to like, yeah, I might as well just get an MDX or something. Well, else. hopefully they learned the lesson from the Avalon and the uh, Lexus CS. Uh, we took them to task on that. I hope so. I mean, the NX is, you know, let's go through recent Lexus history, shall we? The GS was a pretty good <laughs> effort. The, mm -hmm. IS, the, the IS was a mess. Uh, mm -hmm. The NX has been okay. But it's it's not that it's, refined. It, it's, yeah. it's, it's trying to be sporty. It's got stiff. It's it's not luxurious and quiet. And, and the NX never had a history of selling two million refined and quiet SUVs. In the I'm, past. I'm thinking through the mm -hmm. NX history. Yes. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yes. Okay. Well, I'm done. Eight weeks ago. <laughs> yes. Exactly. Yeah. It's a, a Rav4 history, basically. So I mean, that's a big. But they're so hit and miss. You know, a, they got the CT. They got the oh, IS. Yeah. I mean, who are they? Lexus. They made themselves being. I mean, it was that. It was the LS. Being that poster child, isolated, quiet, just like 
luxury. And if they could kind of get back to that, they could own that. Or you just go buy a Ford Edge. No, the, the LS and the RX are probably the best Lexus that's, out there. That's that the Lexus product. Yeah. But DNA, they're, and right. they, they're not happy with that because the auto journalists make fun of them, and right. then they go and make things are stiff. They're messing with it. Um, someone who probably actually did have to deviate from their formula because it wasn't all that successful was Chevrolet with the Malibu. Yeah, that's, that really looks, looks promising. I mean, I'm just hoping that these uh, small turbo engines are going to not do the same thing that Ford EcoBoost engines do and do good num numbers on EPA, but in the mm -hmm. real world, Return really nothing in the real world. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, 1.5 turbo. But I mean, you look yeah. at you look at the Malibu. You look at everything that a midsize sedan should try to do. The Malibu actually looks good. I mean, the Chrysler 200 looks good, but it's a piece of junk. Mm -hmm. the, the, the Malibu looks good, and there's actually rear seat room. And they're uh, applying that weight saving uh, to yeah, right. it's a couple hundred pounds less. Yeah. Well, then they were saying lighter than the best in the business. They were saying lighter they were saying than lighter Altima, than Altima, which is a lightweight, yeah. which is and makes it kind of feel a little insubstantial. So, yeah. so, but here's the thing. I mean, they're doing it with not just nickel and diming, taking out the sound editing, but again, they're using different materials. But, but I don't think it's a big divergence from the playbook. I think the playbook is Impala. I mm. think they went to and figured out what they learned from Impala, and they're like, okay, we'll do it one size smaller. Can I give you the same ride comfort? Can I give you the same right. noise isolation for, what, 3,300, 3,400 pounds? Right. I don't know. We'll That's see. tough. Yeah. Um, they have I mean, their work uh, cut out for them, maybe. Depends on the body stiffness and all kinds of other things. Well, I'm just looking at what, yeah. what GM's been doing lately. I think they got a real good chance of getting this one right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, they also got the hybrid right this yeah, time. Yeah, they're taking a real hybrids. Live hybrid. Yeah, Seriously, real. finally. Yeah. It's not just yeah, like not a little a assist or hybrid. whatever, right. or, or full in with a Volt, but kind of like in that sweet spot. And they're mm -hmm. talking about better fuel economy than, again, the best in the business. And fusion you know? and Camry hybrid. Right. Yeah. Uh, another um, new sedan, one that deviated much less from the previous car was the Kia Optima. Yeah. Uh, yeah, this, this show is really full of meat and potatoes, you know, real cars for real people. You know. As like opposed seat, to Detroit, As opposed which to was Detroit, all where it was all <laughs> esoteric, exotic all cars I mean, for $150,000, exactly. you know. Right. So, yeah, I um, mean, the Optima looks uh, like very much of an evolution of the outgoing car, which still looks fresh and, and nice. And, uh, I mean, the interior is a major upgrade. And, um, yeah, what do you think? I don't know. I was a little disappointed. And just mm -hmm. because the, the last generation of the Optima, I thought just looked really good. In a crowd of like all these mid-sized sedans that all kind of sort of look the same, that last Optima was almost like, kind of like baby Jaguar or something yep. going on. And now it's just kind of like they toned it down a bit. They did the same thing with uh, the, uh, the uh, Hyundai Sonata. Exactly. Um, so I was just kind of, exp I don't know, maybe you know, with each successive generation, of, of, of the Kia and Hyundai mid-sized sedans, they just kind of like blew it out of the park, like, oh, yep. wow. And there wasn't that this time. No, there wasn't the gasp. I right. mean, probably because the previous car was so nice. <laughs> right. Yeah. You know, they were building on success. They weren't trying to rebuild, almost like GM is trying to do with the Malibu. That's right. right. Um, you know, the funny thing is, uh, when you have cars that are, when you have a car like the Optima that is that nice, what does it mean for something like a Nissan Maxima? which we saw introduced here. Yeah, the Nissan Maxima is uh, it's really a, an interesting case because the car, uh, it's really hard to place that car. You know, a large front wheel drive car that's uh, low, trying to be sporty. Um, is it uh, an alternative to a large car? Uh, is it uh, nibbling at the Infiniti um, um, Q? Q50, right? The yep. old G. <laughs> Whatever yeah. they call it today. Um, yeah, and uh, is it a, a big enough step uh, from a high-end Altima? I mean, the Maxima does have a very nice interior. It's a little nicer than an Optima. Is it worth more it, money? It's a car. Is it... Look, I'm sorry. It's a car that doesn't really make sense. The car makes sense from one standpoint. They have all this brand equity from the name Bingo. Maxima. That's it. If they Absolutely. did not have that Maxima in their heritage, yep. mm -hmm. that car would only think would exist. No, you're right. Because, yeah, I mean, people love I want a Maxima. Maxima. I want That's a Maxima. That's what I want. Yeah, for uh, whatever Ultima, reason, I'm not interested. For whatever reason, they have a loyal following. It's like almost a cult. Sure. Because right. they've made some pretty but impressive cars I, going I promise back. you, my parents owned a 1992 Maxima for tw almost 20 years. And I bet I go home, my dad's going to ask me about the new Maxima. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And thing is in the years in between they kind of spent you know they weren't great cars yeah mm -hmm. but yeah you're right this is an oddball you know an upscale front drive sedan right. that isn't real big tries to be kind of sporty we'll see right. um 
let's talk about some real sports cars. Um, Subaru's teasing you with, <laughs> yes. the, with a BRZ STI. That's, that's what I concept. tweeted. Yeah. It's like, here's the car that everyone's been asking for. We're not making it. Man, yeah. I mean, come on, really? It was kind of like, you know, they're saying what STI is and, and not, but they showed it. This is the car that everyone's been waiting yeah, for. Yeah, it's parked right there behind us. It's over us. there. Come on, it's build, blue. Build the car. It's STI. It, nah, Gold they're, wheels. It's it's they're not building it, and they're they're making no bones about that. So why waste their time? Uh, something that is not teasing us is the Ford Focus RS. Yeah, um, really interesting. Uh, I mean, it's direct competitor to the Impreza STI and the Golf R. Um, and uh, yeah, finally it gets uh, comes here. It's a step up from the Focus ST, which is in itself no slouch. No, that's already insane enough. Yeah. Right, well, and uh, you know it's going to be uh, close to forty thousand dollars, all-wheel drive, uh, really hardcore kind of a yeah. sports uh, patch. So uh, yeah, I mean it's. It's, it's a celebration to that chassis. I mean, the Ford Focus is such a wonderful chassis. Mm -hmm. It's absolutely going to be able to take that power and do stuff with it. It's going to yeah. be great, I think. Yeah. Uh, some other new uh, small cars out of here. Scion. Yeah. Scion's going to the mainstream. They introduced the IA, which is, might as well call it Mazda. Mazda it, 2 sedan. It's a Mazda 2. Right. And then you have the IM, which you might as well just call a Corolla hatchback because... Or you call it a Matrix. That's, that's how I remember it, because there's the I and the IM. Oh, the IM is that's the I smart. Matrix. Here's the oh. way to remember it. I mean, it's it's backwards, actually. We talked about it before. <laughs> yeah. The IM should be the, the small one because it's I Mazda. The IA should be the other one because there is a Toyota Oris in Europe. That's the Corolla hatchback. So, yeah, they, they kind of swapped. I'll go with the Matrix, but <laughs> we didn't talk about it. But, but here, here's the thing, and it, I, I, I just tweeted this out myself, but I'm kind of a jerk. But the, the IA, I mean, it is so obviously a Mazda. I mean, sure, nobody, yeah. nobody's seen the new Mazda too, but I mean, it is so, every you look character at the, you line, look at the, size, the tail it's a Mazda. it is so Mazda. It's got a different front end, which mm -hmm. doesn't seem to match the, the rest of the body. Of and you know, what's sad about it is you look at Scion and you've got two sporty cars, right? I mean, I, I bet this little IA is gonna be sporty because mm -hmm. Mazda knows how to do that. And then you got, you, they lean on Subaru with, with the, 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 uh, the FRS. And um, look, I own an MR2. I remember when Toyota knew how to make sporty cars, mm -hmm. but now they seem to have to outsource it every time they want to do that. Right. That's kind of depressing. There is uh, a lot of outsourcing going on, actually, and kind of collaborations, corporate collaborations. Uh, the Nissan, Renault, Mercedes thing with the Smart, which is now a Renault, and uh, but, but, the but upcoming uh, Mercedes truck, which is probably a Nissan. But I will say one thing. One thing that's been kind of constant is these collaborations, they're never reliable, right? Mm. FRS and BRZ, you got Subaru and Toyota who know how to make reliable cars, they come together and it's not reliable. I wanna see if I can come up with an example to prove you wrong, but I don't you have the time. Yeah, uh, <laughs> fill in the comments and <laughs> prove, prove Jake wrong. Sure. Uh, That'll get done. Some we'll, more. We'll have like a Suzu Oasis and we'll have like. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the Oasis, oh my God, really? Um, some new small SUVs. New Hyundai Tucson looks good. Yeah, it looks really good. Uh, and that thing needed to be replaced. Oh. That yeah. was so way tired. overdue. Yeah. 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 It was like the one the one thing in the whole lineup that just didn't really quite belong. Right. And this one totally belongs. It looks, it feels upscale. Mm -hmm. you know? Little turbo engines and yeah. the whole nine yards. Turbo, dual clutch. I mean that, that, that that's not gonna be the majority of it, <clears> but no. yeah. But that's long overdue. Something else that's long overdue is a RAV4 hybrid. Come on, guys. Oh, yeah. You could have done this 10 years I think ago. We must have been talking 10 years ago, talking about two cars that Toyota finally has done, right? RAV4 Hybrid, and the other thing is a Lexus RAV4, mm -hmm. which, again, we finally have with the NX. Yeah. So. Right, that was just a matter of time. After an NX Hybrid, a RAV4 Hybrid was Right, it was a matter no of a brainer. lot of time, but <laughs> right. th these cars are here. I just wonder how different the small SUV landscape would be now if you had the RAV4 Hybrid eight, 10 years ago, how many more hybrids you'd have, how, mm -hmm. much, how much more fuel savings you'd get. Uh, finally, um, you know, because let's face it, the talking car, many of the talking car viewers, they're enthusiasts. You have the Volkswagen Golf Sport Wagon All Track, a wagon, <sighs> an all wheel drive wagon. The Volkswagen Outback. But that's not fair because this thing is much smaller than an Outback. It probably has less rear seat room than an Impreza. 
I don't know about that, but. All right, here's, yeah. here, here's, here's my problem. My, the, no, wait, the, this is the one. The one we're going to talk about this now. This is the one we're going to talk about. <laughs> this is my problem we're going to talk about right now. I mean, the, the problem, here's the thing. The Jetta Sport Wagon, or whatever they called it in their last incarnation, was like the one auto enthusiast car. It, you know, it, it was the wagon. Everyone got it with a stick shift and the diesel. But you can still it was do like, this. check, check, check. But you can but still it, do this with the Golf. You can get the Golf Sports wagon can, with a stick with a diesel. But, but I mean, what's amazing, I mean, you look at those numbers of that, it's like 80% of them were like stick, 80, and 90% of them were diesels. I mean, people were like crazy people like us, you know, and they bought this car. And now finally Volkswagen's like, well, if we were willing to get some numbers, we gotta make it look like an SUV. We gotta give it four-wheel drive. And, and, and the sad You're truth right. is that is true. And they're probably, I'm sure it's gonna be the big seller. I'm sure that's gonna be the volume model. Um, it's probably gonna be a really nice car. You know what? You're right, I built it the wrong way. This is not the enthusiast version of this car. It will not have a stick. It, so right. far, it doesn't have mainstream. a diesel. So, so far, it doesn't have a diesel, right. which I think is insane. This is the mainstream but. version of the enthusiast car. The mainstream, higher priced, jacked up, which all wheel drive, better. fake SUV version. Yeah, yeah. Which will sell. And hopefully, it's better. not going to go the same way as Subaru, where you know, suddenly they're going to phase out actual, you know, legacy wagons, which. I mean, another way to look like. at it, it's, uh, it's a mm. bargain uh, Audi All Road. Sure, I'll go with that. Yeah. I see that look, but, yeah, okay. but it's true. I okay. mean, it, I mean, we know what the Golf is. I mean, it's a pretty impressive car. Absolutely. You know, make it a wagon, all That's true. drive. The, the Golf is a nice car. Yeah. This yeah. might be a nice car, even if it's not that enthusiast -y. <laughs> So it's been a lot of fun bringing you this podcast from the New York Auto Show. We'll see you next time. <laughs>